Jackson! Officer Jackson, move those prisoners! Officer Benton! Kitchen's a staff! Officer Townsend, those rocks ain't gonna break themselves! What are you standing there for? Get moving! What are you looking at? Go on! Get moving! You! You! You with the hammer? And you, you'll do. We need to perform a work detail out near Tumbleweed. Come on, get in. Open the gate. Come on, Milliken. I tell you what, old Jameson is a wretched, sour old bastard, and no mistake. You lot stay calm in there. You weren't saying nothing. Well, you are now. Shut up. You know, my wife has acquired ideas significantly above her station. She's been reading too many goddamn books. Personally, I'm against education. Of women, I mean. And men, I guess. Unnecessary doesn't add much to the world. Education. Good day, gentlemen. Oh. Don't do anything stupid. Nobody gets shot. Act like fools, and the pair of you will be dead within a minute. Now, what are your names? Jenkins and Milliken. Well, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken. Throw your guns to the ground and get on down here. That's it. Very glad to meet you. It's not worth being rash. You boys get paid a salary. You get that salary whether these people escape or not. Your wives presumably want you alive. Just let them out. Now, please. Okay. Okay. You all run away. Aside from you. Try to stay out of trouble. This is a stroke of good fortune for all of you. Use it. Now, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken, be so kind as to uh, quickly run away before somebody gets shot entirely unnecessarily. Go on, don't look back. Mr. Went, I believe it was $50 we agreed on. It was. Here's 50 each. Each? Yes. Now get out of here, both of you. My employer and I appreciate your professionalism. All we did was stand there and look tough. And you did it fantastically well. Good day, gentlemen. Now, ma'am, how about you pick up these guns and we move out? My mistress is waiting for us. Come along. Then you better get on this horse. Just get to grips with the beast. Then we'll ride. Let's just hope no one shows up. This way. She's anxious to meet you. <clears throat> Madam, we're back. Hello. Jessica, the clerk, how do you do? What did you tell her? Nothing, as we discussed. Thank you, Hawley. I do hope we haven't inconvenienced you dreadfully. But seeing as you were due to be hanged in a week, I'm sure you don't object too strongly. I know you're innocent. Well, <laughs> not perhaps exactly innocent, but not guilty of what you were accused. I know you and those who were with you that died were little more than patsies, and that you were set up by one of three men or a woman, possibly by all of them. I can't be sure, but that is all I know so far. And one of these people also made Mrs. Leclerc a widow. And I will avenge my husband's death, so help me God. But I will not avenge it upon them who did not cause it, or caused it unwittingly. Oh, anyway, I'm sure this is all a touch confusing and melodramatic. Oh, where are my manners? 
Holy, please show our guests to their tent and give them some fresh clothes to put on. Very good, madam. Then serve us both a little refreshment. Certainly, madam. This way. You'll find a change of clothes in there, alongside a few other items you might need, a lasso, a knife, and a lantern, I believe. That looks more comfortable. Hawley? Here, madam. Your very good health. I suppose it beats dying, hmm? Mrs. Leclerc's husband was murdered by one of his business partners. And I intend to find out which one. Or rather, I intend for you to find out. And kill them. You're the only person I could possibly trust to do whatever it takes. Because you and your accomplices, you're the only other victims of their lies still alive. You see... You walked into the town at approximately the same time my husband was shot in the back, but by another gun, firing different bullets to those you possessed when you were arrested. These bullets. This was their mistake. You were rounded up and sentenced to death, all because you came to town and didn't talk too much and seemed like you were nasty. Anyway, here they are. The people who run Blackwater. Mr. Jeremiah Shaw, banker, real estate speculator, and crook. Mr. Amos Lansing, ranch owner, speculator, and crook. Mrs. Grace Lansing, his wife, society patroness, lover of the arts, crook, and my former best friend. Teddy Brown, her disgraced brother, outlaw, wanted man, and still in contact with them. All I ask of you is your help in finding out quite what happened. Mrs. Leclerc would like to help you get back on your feet. Get back to work. Whatever your work may be, I don't judge. You want to rob? Rob. You want to save innocent folk? Do that as well. But you need me just as much as I need you. I think we all understand each other. I hope we do. Good. I look forward to rewarding you for killing those who made me a widow. My husband was a true believer in this country and in the West. He was killed for greed. Foul greed when there's quite enough for everybody. I don't care what your scruples are as to killing. I will take the full burden of that sin upon my shoulders. Goodbye, for now. Then, Hawley, go introduce her to nice Mr. Cripps. I think you'll like Cripps well enough. He's long past his prime, of course, but uh, he hasn't gone entirely crazy just yet. And he will help you better than most of his ilk. Cripps! Get up! Oh, hello, partner. Hawley? <laughs> this is your new boss. Oh, pleased to meet you, partner. J.B. Cripps at your service. We'll pay to get your camp established. Mrs. Leclerc is a generous benefactor. And, uh, where are we headed? Hello! You, uh... You must be a Horley's friend. He's one of us. He said you are also a discouraged creature. Now, I will be honest. I try not to talk too much to women. I, well, let's leave that. Alden, that's me. But Horley insisted you was okay. I'm very discouraged, you see. Anyway, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, sort of. I find your reticence charming. Real charming. <laughs> I heard you might want to earn a little extra money. Well, some gentlemen have been robbing our stages, and they are not part of the club, if you catch my meaning. If you can make them go away, I'm sure they will have something of interest to you. They're up near Gap Tooth Ridge. See what you can do, okay? Here, by the way, a catalog. The latest issue just came into this armpit from a land more civilized. And if things work out, well, my colleagues and I move around these stations as needed. And all of us are very discouraged. 
we will all help you with pertinent information, even if you are a lady. Good afternoon, ma'am. Stranger, you don't got the eye, just an eye for a deal. I told you, go away, old man. Nothing but false prophecies and fake jewelry. Go away, or I see much pain and suffering in your future. <laughs> a crook and a charlatan. Uh, Make sure you know what you're getting into with this one. Hey, please don't listen to him. I am Madame Nassar. Channeler of spirits, finder of lost things, and, since everyone seems to be a fortune teller now, seller of the strange and exotic. Mm, which one of these can I help you with today? Wait. Don't speak. Let me see. Mm. Yes. Yes. You're searching for something. What, though? A dead lover. Whose spirit you wish to contact on the other side? No, no, it's not that. It's not something you've lost, but something you're missing. Yes, purpose. Some meaning in the chaos of this life. Well, you see, that is something I can help you with. Come to work for me. I say I find things, but really, it is others who do the finding. I tell them what I'm looking for, and they collect it for me from far and wide. Sometimes with ease, and sometimes through great hardship. It is work that can be as honest or dishonest as you want it to be. Hmm. How about it? Do you want to be one of my collectors? I make sure they are rewarded quite handsomely. A small fee is really the least I should ask for giving you what you're looking for and setting you up with everything you need to get started. There are more tools you may want from me in due course, but first, you will need to prove yourself. If you don't want to start now, you can find me again, and the offer will still be there. Oh, if money is the problem, then that is the first thing you should go looking for. When you found some, return to me. And I set you on your way. What a pure and gentle spirit. I do not trust you.
you sack of shit. Get out of here or I'll blow us all to hell. Wait a second. You're one of them breakouts from Siska, ain't you? Oh, hell, why didn't you just say so? I'm Black Bell, but I suppose you already know that, don't you? Thought you was a bounty hunter. Bounty hunters I can't abide. Had a couple of them pick up some of my boys just the other day, and now they're on their way to Rhodes to hang. Y'all wouldn't like some work, would you? Why, it's good. You can go stop their transport wagon and break them boys out. From what I hear, you should not know how that works. They're coming into Rhodes from the east. Now run along. Only so long before them boys that got rope round their necks. have you been since we robbed you? Where's my property? I don't rightly know what you're talking about, Yes, Clinton. you do. My fine collection of Staffordshire China, gone. My paintings of scenes in Italy, gone. My collection of photographs of fairies, gone. It's all just a big mistake. Where are they? We invested in them together. You owed us money. I did no such thing. Where are my things? In the basement of your sister's house. My sister? God damn her to hell. Here. Here's your money. Kill these men, will you? In fact, don't kill them. Leave them on the tracks. <laughs> Thieves! Cut this rope off me. Good Lord! Now, come on. You're not gonna let because of some staff freaks from China and an argument between a man and his sister. Help me! I knew you were greedy. I didn't realize you were evil. Cold-blooded killers. That's what you are. This is a black mark on all of you. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's cruel. 